Oh, no. It's happening again. No, 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 no. You're okay. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, it's okay. No. It's okay. You're okay. No. It's just a dream. No, it's just a nightmare. The baby's fine. Okay, you're fine. Okay. Oh. Oh. You want me to call Dr. Shapiro? Uh-uh. You feel that? <laughs> well, you woke him up. <laughs> it's really gonna be different this time, right? We're not leaving that hospital without a baby. <sighs> you told me you believe your grandmother is <sighs> watching over him. I do think she is. I do. So do I. You're so good at making me feel better. You're gonna be such a good father. You hear that, Sprout? You're making out at the daddy department. <laughs> I know it tickles, you can't. <laughs> it's true, though. It's a lucky baby. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky too. Alright. Oh my god, David. Ivy told me the previous owners had a lot of stuff, but I had no idea. Yeah, we've been here six months. I didn't know we had so much. Well, you're gonna make a lot of money today. I hope so. Baby needs a college fund. <laughs> Is uh, Ivy in the house? Uh, yeah, she's in there somewhere. Okay. Ivy? Ivy, hey, where are you? Ivy! Okay, Ivy, Marco! Polo! Marco! Marco! Polo! Whoa! All of this has to go, too? Uh-huh. Hey, where's Theo? I thought he offered to help. Yeah, yeah, don't tell me. Some campaign thing. Yeah, I told you he'd skip out on you. Mm, he is rather predictable, isn't he? <laughs> Since high school. So what, David's been hauling all of this stuff down three flights of stairs? Ready for another load? Jeez, Louise, what is that? <laughs> it's the dumb waiter. You want to help me with this? Yeah, sure. Oh, I got it. Okay, we're ready. Thanks. Hey, I wonder if any of these old magazines are worth any money. Ugh. Somebody had morbid taste. I dreamed about losing the baby again last night, Jody. Oh, you poor hormonal thing. Ivy, you will get through this. And in a few weeks, you are gonna have a baby here with you. <laughs> and then you will definitely have something to worry about. What? Honey, this place is a baby-proofing nightmare. All of those stairs and the landings and a dumbwaiter? <laughs> this thing is an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> you should board this up. Ivy, can't believe you got David to sell his old bowling ball. I know, it's like taking candy from a child, but there's still two of them up there. You don't have a price tag on anything, dear. The secret is to put a price on a tag that's a little high, because everyone likes to haggle. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Bindle, I've got to run home and get the baby. Jeff has to help his dad fix the roof. Okay, well, promise to come back. If I can. If you need an extra pair of hands, I'd be happy to help. Oh, you're so sweet. You know, I, I could do with some help unpacking some of those boxes. Good. Excuse me. Uh, ten dollars. Hi, me. Oh, you don't remember me. <laughs> Mindy White? Well, Melinda, back then. 
Melinda, from high school, yes. <laughs> wow, you look great and and huge, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Is it your first? Yes, my first and probably my last. Morning sickness was horrible. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm due in a few weeks. You? Uh, same. Isn't that funny? Both having a baby at the exact same time. <laughs> So, boy or girl? I don't know, but uh, David seems to think that it's a boy. But I bet you want a little girl, right? <laughs> I know I do. Uh, you collect depression glass? Oh, no, my mother collects swans, or used to. She's, she sold her house here in Webster Falls and moved to Florida with my sister, Ruth. Do you remember Ruthie? Yeah, we live just a few streets over. And my mom actually used to work at this house. She took care of the old guy who lived here. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, I'd come hang out here after school. I'm going to give you the privilege of dealing with the money. OK. Hello, David. Oh, David, uh, you remember Melinda White from high school? Uh, yeah. Good to see you. Ivy. Ivy, dear. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Okay. I don't know how much you want for these curtains, but there's not a thing wrong with them. What's wrong? Just a cramp, I think. Oh, well, here, come sit down. Oh. I don't think you should take less than $50. $50 sounds great. Good. <laughs> so how much did you want for this one? Oh, nothing. It, it's a gift. Oh. Babe, do you know where the box of books is? I think I left them in the attic. Uh, I'm gonna go grab him if someone wants him. Sure. You know, I would love to take a peek inside the house, see if it still looks the same. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, David, could you show Melinda the house? It's Mindy now, remember? Mindy, sorry. So, um, thank you for this one. Okay. Fifty dollars. Congratulations. Although I wish I'd asked for 75. Hey, where's your chopping knife, Ivy? Uh, I was there this morning. I had it. $2,228. Whew. I swear, I should give up designing websites and just do yard sales for a living. I bet you all that money you're not going to go back to work after your maternity leave. I sure couldn't do it. We'll see. Ladies. Oh, look who shows up after all the work is done. <laughs> Hot off the press. Wow. David said to make sure it's okay with you to put this out front. Watch it, watch it. You want this? <laughs> sure. You know how I like to see your smiling face every morning? Your neighbor's gonna be jealous you got the very first one. <laughs> Don't worry, Jody, I got one for you too. Oh, great, thanks. It's exactly what I've been waiting for. <laughs> Doesn't that crack you up? That guy who used to sneak into the girls' washroom for a peek is now running for office. Yeah, he did also hold down two jobs to get himself through law school. Come on. OK, it cracks me up a little. Thank you. You said yes. Right there, how's that look? How's that look? <laughs> yeah? Right there? Have you seen my toothbrush? I can't find it. Bath first. Brush later. It's driving me crazy. Everything I touch gets lost. All right, well, you're about to soak all your cares away. Okay. Oh, sorry. Wait, got caught. No, don't take it off. Okay, well, just let me. The fastener broke. No, David, David, please. I don't want to be without it. Okay, just for tonight, okay? Mm. And I'll fix it first thing in the morning. Okay. Promised. This is exactly what I needed. Good. <sighs> Foot. <laughs> Thank you. Does that feel good? Mm hmm. I can't wait to clean the attic tomorrow. Now that it's empty. I'll clean the attic tomorrow. 
Shouldn't you be taking it easy? Well, I gotta do something. Well, I know something you can do. No, I'm not ready to put the nursery together yet. I don't want to jinx it. So what was it like showing Melinda the house? Did she talk to you? She just talked about games she used to play up there. You know, hide and go seek and stuff. Is she married or what? It's just the wind. <laughs> I thought it was a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you see, I got you. <laughs> I almost got you. Almost. What are you doing? Where are you going? <sighs> to work. But it's Sunday. Yeah, the lawn at the Kessler building flooded and they're blaming the sprinklers my guys put in, so I gotta go check it out. Yeah, right. You just wanna get out of cleaning the attic? I will do that when I get back. <clears throat> Love you. You too. Wow, you look like you've been mud wrestling. Yeah, when they said it flooded, they weren't kidding. Could have throttled Jerry. Now we're gonna have to redo the entire lawn. Hmm. Hope you had more fun than I did today. I did. I was gonna paint the nursery, but I ended up cleaning the attic. <laughs> I told you I was gonna come back and do that. I know, but you know, it really wasn't that bad. It was just one box of books that I couldn't move. I thought that you'd gone out there to bring them down for the yard sale yesterday. Look at that, the kids are throwing all that crap everywhere. All right, I'm going to tell them to knock it off. Hey, hey, go make a mess somewhere else, come on. Nightmare. He's had a nightmare. Okay, the baby's fine. Shh. Okay. No. The baby's fine. David, she's not moving. She might not be moving now. It's it's hey. No, she hasn't moved in about a day. David, please, we gotta go call Dr. Shapiro. Please. Okay, calm down. <laughs> Just take a deep breath. Okay. Please, we have to call her now. All right, I'll go call the doctor and see if we can get you in this morning, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Doctor said she could squeeze us in if we get there by 9.30. Ivy, did you hear me? I can't find my necklace. It's gone. I put it on the sink there the other night. Well, it's not there now. Okay, well, maybe you picked it up and you put it somewhere else no, after your back. No, I didn't. Okay, I, just, I, I don't think I did. I, I just keep losing everything. Okay. We look for it after the doctors. No, David, I need it now. 
Okay, that amulet is, is keeping this baby safe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just so scared. I, I just can't lose another one. I know. I just can't do it. All right, let's go to the doctor. Now that is what we call a good, strong heartbeat. <laughs> Sounds like a horse at the Kentucky Derby. Now don't worry if you don't feel a lot of movement from here on out. Maybe stand to quiet down towards the end. You think she'll hatch soon? Could be any day. Could be a few more weeks. Weeks? I'm gonna drive David crazy by then. I snapped at him this morning for no reason. He's been having bad dreams. Horrible dreams. Well, that's understandable, but this pregnancy is different, I think. I'm just afraid. Twice I let my guard down, and twice I lost my baby. So... There's no indication that's where we're headed now. No, it wasn't before either. You don't even know why I lost the others. Ivy, you're almost to term. All the tests come back normal. You have every reason to expect that you'll be holding a healthy baby in the very near future. <laughs> So, have you picked out names yet? <laughs> she won't talk about names. She won't unwrap the car seat. She won't put the crib together. Well, you guys better get busy, because this baby is ready to boogie. Thank you. Thank you. Boogie Rose. That works if it's a boy. That works if it's a girl. Works if it's a band. Well, Dr. Shapiro's right. We can't keep calling him Sprout. So, we got to think of something else. We got to. I don't know, let's name him after a food we like. We're not naming this kid Rolling Rock. Ooh, Rolling Rock Rose. <laughs> it's got a certain cachet. Thank you for getting me through another tough moment. It's gonna be smooth sailing from here on out. Yeah. Because I'm gonna buy us one of those heart rate monitor things. <laughs> Look, another one is messing with our garbage. That man has been here 20 minutes, knocking on your door, looking in your windows. Excuse me, sir? You mind not digging through my trash, please? Detective Frank Blanchard, Webster Falls Police Department. Ma'am, would you please take the dog away? You David and Ivy Rose? Yeah, what's this about? You seen this woman? That's Melinda White. You know her? She was at the same high school as us. And you last saw her? Saturday morning, she was at our yard sale. Did something happen to her? That's what I'm trying to find out. So you folks talked to her? I talked to her. She bought a glass swan, or she didn't actually buy it, I gave it to her. Apparently, her mother collects swans, or maybe it was her sister or something. Um, anyway, uh, my husband then took her inside and showed her around the house. Yeah, right? Yeah, uh, she said she used to come here as a kid. She just wanted to see if it was still the same, so. So you gave her this tour, and then what? Uh, we just, uh, I think we both went out the back door, and uh, she left. After she left, did, uh, did you see which way she went? Nope. Wasn't paying attention, not sure. Uh, I mean, how did you know she was here? Her sister reported her missing. She's eight months pregnant. We found her car parked down the street there. A newspaper with your uh, yard sale ad sitting on the front seat. Did you see her talking to anyone else? No. Can you describe what she was wearing? No Dark idea. Dark pants, a beigey maternity blouse with blue cornflowers on it and a white canvas bag. 
I, I know this close. <laughs> Those are your items? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the stuff we didn't sell Saturday for the yard sale. So now you're going to throw them out? Yeah. If there's a problem leaving them out until trash day, I'll just No problem them. under normal circumstances. However, gotten a warrant anyway. That's what they're supposed to do. Yeah, well, we have nothing to hide. All right, so this, this girl that we're missing is Melinda White? As in Melinda White from high school. OK, what was that? What was that look between you? Nothing. She's just kind of, you remember, she was odd back then. Well, she certainly grew out of it. The detective said she's a supervisor at a medical lab. Look, I think the fact that there was blood in her clothes means that she went into labor. I think we should be calling all the hospitals. All right, here we go. Now, remember, you're doing them a favor by talking to them. Just relax, I'll take care of this. I don't like where it's going, I'm shutting it down. Let's go. So you said you saw several people rummaging through the wicker trunk. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, all kinds of people. Uh huh. Can you describe them? No, I mean, I wasn't really paying, paying attention, right. Um, I'm very concerned that Melinda might have gone into labor. We've checked I... every hospital in a 100-mile radius. Well, what about the father of her baby? Her husband, her boyfriend? She was very secretive about her boyfriend. Didn't even know his name. OK, if Melinda was grabbed before she got to her car, and she's pregnant, and Ivy's pregnant, should I be worried about my wife? I wouldn't worry about it. We'll have a car parked outside 24-7. Which means they plan to keep you under surveillance. When you, uh showed Miss White around the house on this little tour of yours. Uh, did you go through the attic? Yeah. Yeah, I've showed her the whole house, attic, everything. Mm hmm Did you vacuum afterwards? No, that was me. I cleaned up there yesterday. Mm hmm Well. <clears throat> You missed something. This was under the day bed in your attic. You gave Miss White a glass wand, did you not, Mrs. Rose? We found bits of glass in the vacuum cleaner bag and chunks of it in the trash can outside your back door. Which makes me think that someone went to a lot of trouble to clean up that glass. This interview is over. Wouldn't you say that, Mrs. Rose? What's going on? It's not as bad as he made it look. Okay. Did you see Melinda leave or not? No. You lied? Not to you. To the police. Why, David? That's what I like to know. It was stupid. It was, a, it was an impulse, okay? You were so freaked out this morning. And then when we got back from the doctors, we got a detective in our front yard asking us a whole bunch of questions. I just wanted him to go away. I told him what I thought was the truth. How am I supposed to know he's going to take Melinda's clothes out of our trash? By that time, it's too late. I can't go back and contradict myself. So what did actually happen with Melinda in the attic? Nothing. I, I took her up there, and she was talking about all the things she used to do up there, play jacks, whatever. Like, and then she just starts going off about her mother and how crazy her mother was and how awful high school was. And then she starts crying, and she throws a swan on the ground. It shatters, the glass goes everywhere. So I went downstairs to get a broom. I couldn't find one at first. By the time I did, I go back up there. She's gone. So I just swept it up and went back down to the yard sale. So why didn't you tell me all this on Saturday? I didn't think it was worth talking about. Besides, you know how you've been with- What is that supposed to mean? Ivy, the wind makes the house creak and you jump out of your skin. I'm just, you've been having a rough time with so it's my fault that you can't tell the truth? No, I wasn't trying to not tell the truth. How the hell was I supposed to know this was going to happen?
You don't usually come out to beat the bushes with us. What's up? You know, my daughter had a baby last year, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I still smell that cigar you gave me in my squad car. I remember when she was pregnant, she looked so defenseless and vulnerable. I almost hurt the look at her. I will find out what happened to Mom in the White. Not the time for my life to turn to crap right now. Put a baby on the way. See the way Ivy looked at me? As if she was wondering about me. So what was Melanie's deal, huh? What else did she say to you up there? Just stuff about high school. That I remember what happened in high school. Well, you better hope the cops don't start asking about that. They're gonna twist it all around on you. Popular girl. How long has Miss White lived here? Oh, four or five months. I can find out the exact date if you want. Bring any male friends home with her? No. See any men visiting her apartment? No, oh, nothing like that. She worked real long hours at that lab, I guess. This is her sister? Don't know. Not much here. Not my business. Did you ever mention a boyfriend? No. Nope. Yeah. Give me the DA's office. It's been more than 24 hours since Webster Falls resident Melinda White vanished. She was last seen here at the home of Ivy and David Rose, two people that she reportedly went to high school with. Now, police are not commenting on the case, but we do understand that Melinda White is eight months pregnant, and anybody with any information is urged to call police. Did they say anything about... Still missing. <clears throat> Did you get any sleep? A little. You? Not much. I think I had a bad dream last night. Mm. Why was Melinda voted most popular girl in class? Hmm? It was in the yearbook. She wasn't popular at all, was she? I don't know. I just I think it was supposed to be a joke. Really? How do you know? You went on it? No, no. I know about it, but I'm just gonna shower, okay? I was thinking, maybe you could skip work today. Help me organize a search for Melinda. Maybe get some of your gardeners to knock on doors or something. Uh, can we talk about that tomorrow? Why not today? Because I... I have important things to do today. I got... David? What could possibly be more important than... Melinda's missing. You don't seem that concerned. <clears throat> it's your baby shower. Jody... Plans you a surprise baby shower at Rose Gardens. I gotta go help set up. Uh, 
I ruined the surprise. No. Sorry. It's okay. This, this whole thing is just getting to me. I mean, it's wearing on me. Just, I don't, I don't want to talk about Melinda White. I don't want to go look for Melinda White. I don't want anything to do with Melinda White. Nothing. I just, I just want to do what I planned on doing today, and that's putting together a nice day for my wife. Set two. Just try to act surprised if, you know, so Jody's not pissed. I will. Promise. jerk to you this morning. It's okay. I love you. I love you too. Good. Oh, that was a great reaction. Hey, you like that? Thank you. I practiced in the car. Oh, God. Uh, hey, honey. Hi. How are you? So, tell me why you didn't call me yesterday to tell me about Melinda White. I just read about it in the paper this morning. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Ivy and the baby's day, okay? We're not talking about that. Just enjoy. Just mingle. Go. Go. Hey, mingle. <laughs> Oh, good to see you all. <gasps> this is Bendel. Thank you for coming. It's such a pleasure. Oh, what did you do to yourself? Oh, come here. Oh, oh, <gasps> Mrs. Bendel, did you make this yourself? I knit while I'm watching Katie Couric give the news. It's it's gorgeous. Beautiful color, I thought. Yeah. Ta da! <laughs> this was too big to wrap. Everyone at the office pitched in. That thing is sweet. <laughs> Watch out, though. The kid will expect a Porsche after riding around in this chair. Is. David. Dearest, let no, me no. handle this. Let no. me handle this. What the hell do you think you're doing? Coming to my place of business when my wife's having a baby we shower, got a warrant huh? to search uh, the premises. Fine, you got a warrant. Let's just take it outside. No, no, no. I want his ass out of here. Hey, why don't you show a little common courtesy, a little integrity? Cough him. Hey, hey, hey. hey he's going. Hey. He's going. He's going. David. David. Get, get him out of here. Back off. Take an Ivy. Back off. Hey, Let's take an Ivy. Take your hands off. He's going. Excuse the interruption. All right, let's get on with it. David, I want to stay. I know, but I'd rather you be home safe. I'm sorry. So, I gotta let these bastards dig through my office. It's all here in the warrant. I want to stay. This concerns I me mean, too. I mean, listen. If you're not here, they can't ask you any questions. The best way you can help right now is by leaving. Right. Hey, Jody, can you please give Ivy a ride home? Yeah, sure, of course. I don't need a ride home. I have my own car here. Yeah, I'll get one of the gardeners to take it home. Can you please? Just do this for me so I can deal with this. I don't have to worry about you or the baby. Okay. Thank you. It's gonna be okay. I promise. Okay. I haven't seen her since high school, and suddenly my life is turning upside down because of her. You haven't seen her in all these years. Huh. I have. Where? Um, at the library once. And the hospital a few times, like when Riker was born and when I came to see you after... After your miscarriage? What was she doing at the hospital then? Oh, well, she used to work there. In one of the labs. Oh, and I saw her once in... Where? Where'd you see her? Uh, it doesn't matter. 
Of course it matters. She's missing. Um, I, uh, saw her at Rose Gardens in the showroom. What? It was that day that you were miserable with morning sickness, and uh, you asked me to drop off some insurance forms to David. Uh-huh. And she was just standing in the showroom, hanging up by the koi ponds. Honey, it doesn't have to mean anything. She could have just been shopping for plants. Right. Plants. Frank! Frank! Over here! Didn't Rose's wife say Melinda White was carrying a white bag? Yeah. I can put that son of a bitch in a car right now, take him down to the station. Appreciate the enthusiasm, but we might want to let the lab process the uh, evidence first. Right? Fine. Be a stickler about it. So what about the wife, anyway? Think she knows anything? There are ways of finding out. Hey! What, what happened? were there for hours just asking me questions taking things away in paper bags they think i had something to do with melinda why would they think that you haven't seen her since high school right i know i mean i i told them that a hundred times is it true that you haven't seen her since high school you know i haven't Jody saw Melinda at Rose Gardens four months ago. It was when Jody was dropping off the insurance forms. She was in the showroom by the Koi Ponds. Is she going to tell the cops that? I don't know. What I need to know is, did you know she was there? Did you talk to her? No. I just told you I haven't seen her since high school. Why are you yelling at because me? Because I don't... I don't know what the hell is going on. I mean, you... I just got finished being grilled by the cops. And I'm not allowed to ask you questions? Yes, you can. You can. You... You're allowed to ask me anything you want. I just need you to believe my answers. I, I just need to feel like we're on the same side right now, okay? We all on the same side. Come here. I promise. Sorry, didn't mean to wake you. No, it's, it's fine. I was hardly sleeping anyway. You don't mind if I put this together now, do you? No. No, it's time, I think. Uh, I'm gonna go get dressed. I'm gonna run to the store. We need some milk. Okay. Uh, if I'm not here when you get back, it's because I went to the hardware store. Can't find my Phillips head screwdriver. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you look huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready to pop. No kidding. <laughs> Your turn to do the shopping? Yeah, Shelly doesn't care for it a coffee, but I do. <laughs> Is um, David doing okay? Or the cops searched Rose Gardens because of the Melinda White thing? Yeah, they did. It was pretty hard on him. It's pretty ironic if you ask me if they actually suspect him of doing anything to her. Because back in the day, he was the only one who was even halfway nice to her. What, you mean back in high school? Well, yeah, back when we started the Monday Night Bowling thing. Uh, Melinda worked at the bowling alley. And we used to tease her, make fun of her. I mean, we were idiots back then. But not David. He was always Mr. Gentleman, you know? Yeah. Well, like I said, ironic. Hope they find her alive and well. Yeah. I really do. Take care, Abby. What do you want? Good morning to you, too. Please. The stress is bad for the baby. Just tell me what it is you want. I need to take you into the station for questioning. Am I under arrest? No. Just need to ask you a few questions, with your lawyer present, of course. I'll try to make it as low stress as possible. Well, can I at least leave a note for my husband? Take as much time as you need. I'm sure Theo was on his way. He must have got caught up in some traffic or something. Not a lot of traffic between here and the room down the hall. Mr. Garvers was already here when you called him. He came with your husband. David's here? Mm hmm. We brought him in for questioning an hour ago. You know, Mrs. Rose, in my experience, it's not always wise for a husband and wife to share the same attorney. There can be a conflict of interest. I'll go see what's holding them up. ready for her interview, Mr. Rose. You can stay and watch, or you will wait in Detective Blanchard's office. Theo, what's going on? Where's David? I was watching this interview in the other room, against my advice. I don't understand. Why are they doing this? It's called divide and conquer. But you're not going to help them out, OK? Don't say a word, no matter what they throw at you. Not a word, you got it? Not a word. Detective Sergeant Frank Blanchard, Webster Falls Police Department. Wednesday, November 2nd, I'm talking to Ivy Rose. Mrs. Rose, when did you realize your husband was having an affair with Melinda White? This was stuck to the door of Miss White's refrigerator. It's the same photo she showed her co-workers at the hospital last year when she told them that your husband was her boyfriend and the father of her child. Do you recognize this bag? Melinda White's wallet and possessions were inside it. We found it in the dumpster behind the barn at Rose Gardens. You know what? Just give her a minute. 
Inside the bag, we also found a knife. It matches the set in your kitchen. We discovered blood on the knife. And bits of fetal tissue. We got a court order to get a DNA swab from your husband. We expect the DNA evidence to show that David Rose was indeed the father of the child killed with that knife. One more thing. This message was on Miss White's answering machine. Can you tell us about your husband's whereabouts the day Melinda White disappeared? That's enough. Excuse me, baby, be sick. Rose. I know I seemed heartless in there, but sometimes the kindest thing I can do for someone is to hit them with the truth all at once. Get it over with. That's your kindest thing. The hardest part of my job is telling a mother, or in Melinda White's case, her sister, that her loved one has likely been murdered. You know what the second hardest part of my job is? It's telling someone that her loved one is likely a monster who committed murder. I'm sorry you had to be that someone today. We're gonna post bail in the morning. David will be home by tomorrow afternoon. I don't know if I want him home. I'm not gonna tell him he said that. Ivy, David did not kill Melinda. You were in that room with me. You saw the same evidence I did. Right, but I also know David. And so do you. Do I? Ivy, can't you see what's happening? He's being framed. Someone wants the cops to think that he did it. And I suppose somebody tried to trick him into leaving that message on our answering machine, too. No, he's sleeping with her. No. No. Jody saw her at Rose Garden. Ivy, David's no cheater. Haven't you wondered why there's no body? We got bloody clothes and a weapon, both popping up in easy to find places. Why no body? Huh? It doesn't make sense. Why didn't you or David ever mention that Melinda worked in the bowling alley during high school? Who told you that? What does that matter? Is it true? Yeah. Why didn't David ever mention it? Because I told him not to. What? Because I told him not to. Look, if the cops find out about it, they're gonna talk to the guys on the football team, and they're gonna find out that... Look, Melinda had a thing for David back then. What do you mean a thing? A thing, a crush. She, she follow him around, she bring him sodas. <laughs> it was no big deal. But if the cops find out about it, they're gonna make it a big deal. Yeah. You can't say anything. Ivy, it's best they don't find out about that. I don't want to talk about this anymore. There they are, there they are. Come, there they are. Ivy! 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 Just let us report the truth. Mrs. Rose, is David the father of Melinda White's baby? Mrs. Rose! Get him here! Get him here! Mrs. Rose, did your husband kill Melinda White? Ivy! Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Here, honey, you have to eat. The detective called him a monster. Do you honestly believe that? <sighs> honey, we've known him since we were kids. Do you really think that he could... I don't know. My mind can't believe it and it can't not believe it either. <sighs> Just frozen, stuck. Okay. I know David and Theo and those guys, they did, they got away with a lot in high school. You know, they were cocky and, and they were arrogant and yeah, they drove me crazy sometimes. But honey, they're all basically good guys, especially David. But you saw Melinda at Rose Gardens. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I gotta admit, that does bother me. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's Ivy? Theo? What's going on? They got another warrant. They're here for your computer. Back in the kitchen. Check upstairs. I was told on my way in here that the plane ticket bought for the Cayman Islands was bought from our computer in the middle of the night. No. No, that's, I mean, that's impossible. Obviously not. Okay, well then someone else was in our house. Who, David? Whoever killed Melinda. She says that you were her boyfriend. She, her fiance. She was lying. But David, you're the one who's told lie after lie. I told one lie. I told one lie and it was to protect you. I need you now. I need you to help me figure this out. You knew out. her phone number? I called information for the you. Police the police told me you were the father of her in. child? I am not. The DNA is going to prove that, okay? I'm the father of our baby. They found our chopping knife behind your office with blood on it and fetal tissue. Ivy, you know me better than anyone else on this planet. Now, do you honestly think that I could take a pregnant woman up into our attic while dozens of people are walking around our yard and stab her in the belly. Do you think that I waited until you were asleep and then I took her body somewhere else, but I brought her clothes back and then I put them in the trash can? I mean, even if you thought that I was that sick, do you think I could be that stupid? Arrogant people do stupid things all the time. Because it never occurs to them they're gonna get caught. But I guess I should thank you. You could have got rid of me instead of your mistress. Don't you say that. Don't you say that. After all these years we've been together, I have never turned my back on you. This is not about me. This is about you. This is about you believing. David, they're telling me you killed someone. I don't care what they're telling you. You know me, okay? I've dealt with more death in my lifetime up to this point than I've ever wanted to. I've watched you push out two dead babies. I'm sorry, <laughs> okay? Ivy, I'm, I'm sorry. Do not touch me. Do I'm not sorry. touch me. Do not touch me. Okay, that came out. Do not sorry. touch me. I didn't do it, though. I mean, you have to believe me. Come, Ivy, I promise you I didn't do this. Maybe not now. I'm not in the mood. Phoebe, what is wrong with you? Mrs. Bindell? Phoebe? Phoebe, what's up? Miss... <gasps> Mrs. Bindell? Can you hear me, Mrs. Bindell? You don't think that was an accident, do you? You see the marks in the grass here? Someone dragged her over to the steps to make it look like she fell. Why would anyone want to hurt her? 
You can see through half the windows in your house from the front here. Maybe she saw something she wasn't supposed to see the day Melinda White went missing. Well, if that's true, if that's why someone hit her. David's in jail. He couldn't have done it. So maybe, just maybe, he didn't kill Melinda White. Maybe it was someone else. Or maybe someone's helping him to cover it up. The husband has a lot of friends in this town. His employees. It's a little far-fetched, don't you think? We'll see what Mrs. Bendell says when she wakes up. That's the only way you'll consider an alternative, if she tells you so? Ruth White calls me every day to find out what happened to her sister. All I can tell her is where the evidence leads me. I've shown you that evidence. And every bit of it still points to your husband. Apart from this little bit here, the bit where my neighbor gets attacked. You want to believe your husband's innocent? I get it. And you'll jump on any reason to help you believe it. I don't have that luxury. All I can do is follow the evidence, whether you like where it takes me or not. Until Mrs. Bendell can tell us what happened, I'm putting your house back under surveillance. Jody, I need a favor. Here you go, Phoebe. No? Well, that's all I've got. I'll be right out. Did he see me, or is he still in his car? Uh, no, he's still in his car. So, what are we doing? I'm about to have David's baby. I can't sit around and wait for the cops to figure out if he's a murderer or not. I have to know now. OK. OK, so where are we going? To break into Melinda White's apartment. We have to start somewhere, Jody. Fair enough. So what newspaper did you say you work for again? Does it matter? I'll be back in 10 minutes to lock up. Don't touch anything. Okay, you take the living room. I'm gonna look in here. Okay. Ivy, there's nothing in here. There's no cards, there's no notebooks. Yeah, you know what else isn't here? There's no baby stuff, no maternity clothes. You know what? Like, it's almost like she never really lived here. Well, maybe she didn't. Maybe she lived with her boyfriend, her real boyfriend. Well, if she did, then this place is a dead end. I wish I could speak to her mother, but Melinda says she sold her house and moved to Florida. I don't suppose Detective Blanchard will give me her number. No, but maybe the person she sold the house to would. You can sit there giving me that cop stare all night long. My attorney advised me not to say a word to you. 
those were words. You and your lawyer are pretty tight, right? Did you tell him how the whole thing went down? Did you tell him that you were worried the neighbor lady might have seen something she shouldn't have seen? You sure this is the right place? Yeah, I came here once in the 11th grade to work on a history project. That's the third time today that you've done that. Why do you keep doing that? Braxton Hicks, I've been having them all day. Practice labor? How do you know it's not real labor? I've been in labor before, I know what it feels like. Elaine Gallagher, that must be who bought the house. Maybe she's listed, we could just call her. It doesn't look like anyone's inside. Well, how do we get in there? Do you think maybe there's a spare key? I don't know. I'll look down here. Nothing, you? No. Is anyone looking? No. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Should we do it? Let's do it. We're good. Hello? You wanted to have your cake. You need it too. The wife and the mistress. But then the mistress got pregnant and things got dicey. The only uh, question I haven't been able to answer that's why you waited so long to off the mistress. Was it because you couldn't decide which one to keep? Hmm? Maybe the wife was getting on your nerves. Hey, shut up about my wife! Do you understand me? Don't say another word about her! Look how easy it is for you to froth at the mouth, huh? Go to hell. Oh, what is that smell? Oh. Hello, is there anybody here? Oh. What is that? This is the same as it was 10 years ago, oh. except for the smell. This is exactly the same too. Okay, this is weirding me out. Could Melinda have been living here all along? Oh my god, Jody, look. Oh, some of these are recent. This, this is why I saw her at Rose Garden. She was stalking him. Are you okay? Yeah, it's just the smell. Melinda White, U.S. History, third period. Some of this stuff is from high school. This is her diary. It's from David's senior year. March 8th, David looked at me in the cafeteria today. April 23rd, I watched football practice today, and when David walked past me, a drop of his sweat fell on my arm. Ew, she was obsessed with them. May 2nd, Theo followed me into the girls' washroom. He asked if I was going to tell anyone about what happened in the bowling alley. What happened in the bowling alley? Uh, I pretended I didn't know anything, so I go away, but I remember, I have no idea. Oh my god, Joey. What if Melinda knew something that could hurt Theo? He's running for office. He wouldn't want anything bad to get out about him. Ivy, no, no. Even if he did do something to hurt Melinda, there is no way that he would blame it on David. David is his best friend. I don't know, desperation? I mean, if, if he knew that Melinda had a thing about David, then wouldn't David be the logical choice? Honey. Theo keeps pushing us not to cooperate with the police, not, not to answer any questions. Theo's got a key to our house. He, he, he could have come in and used our computer to buy that plane ticket. Oh, God, I'm gonna be sick again. Oh. Ivy? 
I know, I'll go make the call, I'll be right back. <sighs> Ivy? Mm, you okay? Mm, I like Demerol. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's too bad they can't give me any. <laughs> so how's it going? Two centimeters dilated. Yeah. It's gonna be a long night. Yeah, you can say that again. I'm just gonna go to the washroom, okay? Jody? Yeah? You made the call anonymously, right? Yeah, I did. They're probably finding Melinda's body right now. What's that? More Demerol? Oh, no, just something to help protect the baby from the drugs. this. I still can't believe it just fizzled out like that. Well, every once in a while, we do get a baby who changes his mind, decides to wait for a better birthday. I just feel like such a failure. Oh, now, you'll get another chance right quick, I promise. You just rest there for a while. If you don't have any more contractions by morning, we'll let you go on home. Oh, do you mind leaving it on? I like to hear the baby's heartbeat. No problem. Just push that button if you need me. Sure. Well, we had quite the adventure tonight, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, you should go home, get some sleep. Okay. I just left you a change of clothes on the table. Jody? I don't think David did it. I wish I could tell him that. Sorry, you, know, was, you looked dead asleep when I came in, so it's just, uh, it's okay. Listen, uh, I got big news. They found a body in the house where Melinda used to live, a body with stab wounds. Ten to one, it's Melinda. You don't seem surprised. Nothing surprises me anymore. Problem is, this is a game changer for David. The case is no longer strictly circumstantial. If there's any evidence on that body, then... David didn't kill Melinda, and you know it. Yeah, I know it, but I'm worried that whoever framed David made sure the cops will never know it. That's what you think. The investigation isn't over. 
They still don't know what happened in the bowling alley back in high school, do they, Theo? Pete, how do you know about that? How do you know about that? Did you need something, hon? I'd like to get dressed. And please, can you make sure my lawyer doesn't get lost on his way out? I don't know what your problem is. But I'll be better tonight. We can sit down and talk this through. Okay? Rose, surprised to see you here. Well, this is the place to come if you go into labor. It stopped. What about you? Mrs. Bindell woke up. How is she? She's sore. She's gonna need a lot of rest, but she'll be okay. So? She doesn't remember what happened. She doesn't remember who hit her? You're genuinely disappointed. Of course I am. I was hoping to be able to help us figure this whole thing out. But at least you have Melinda's body now. That should help you find the person who really did this, right? What makes you think it was her body we found? Theo, my lawyer, told me that a body was stabbed and was found at Melinda's old house. True. But it wasn't Melinda White's. And who? It was her mother. I thought her mother lived in Florida. That's what we were told by her sister. And now suddenly she's unreachable. I'll tell you the truth, uh, I don't know what the hell's going on. I could have told you that. me this time. Why are you doing this to me? Because that's my baby. <laughs> Thought that might wake you up. <laughs> what is it? Pitocin. We want to get those contractions started again. Last night, you put something in my IV. That was Ritadrine to stop the contractions. It would have been inconvenient if you had had my baby there. <gasps> this is not your baby! But I've been pregnant all these months. Oh my God, you were never pregnant. I was once. But I'm guessing David never told you about that, did he? About that day we were together? Melinda writes about a day when her boss left her alone at the alley and a bunch of knuckleheads came in with a case of beer. 
and asked her if she wanted to keep score. David was so sweet to me that day. Especially after the guy has sprayed beer all over me, got me all wet. She says that after some kind of beer fight, you took her into a back room. Never happened. It's all in there. She talked about the smell of your cologne. The chain around your neck that kept hitting her in the face. Chain, I didn't wear a chain. And David tried to pretend like it never happened, but I had proof. I was pregnant. What happened to your baby? She's gone. My mother made me have an abortion. Another reason she deserved to die. <laughs> anyway. Point is, David owes me a baby, and I'm going to take it. <laughs> no. Calm down. I'm down. I'm just untying your hands. I want you to be able to use the bathroom. I've sterilized the bed, and we don't want you contaminating it, now do we? <laughs> You're a monster, you know that? <laughs> no. I'm a mother, willing to do anything for her child. Well, so am I. You will have to kill me first. Don't worry. It'll be painless. Six or seven shots, and you'll just drift away nice and sweet. Unless you make things more difficult for me. Then I'll just kill you quick. Take the baby myself. All right. The Pitocin should kick in soon, and I'll be back to check on you. Everything that my family has been through this past week. David. It never crossed your mind to tell David, me that, listen you me that Melinda that into the room and you raped her? It wasn't rape. It was consensual. We were wasted. I tried talking to her about it later, but she was acting like she didn't remember, so why would I even bother bringing it up with her again? Why'd you think it was me, Theo? Why? What'd you say to How her? How should I know? She was crazy. Maybe she was crazy because you raped her. You dragged her in the back room. She was traumatized. What I want to know is two in this together? Huh? Come on. Huh? Give me a break. Or did your good friend Theo here get rid of Melinda and her inconvenient secret and try to frame you for it? Man's running for office. Hmm? Wouldn't want that to get out now, would we? Oh, no, not now. 
Ivy? Blanchard, please. Frank, listen to this. Blanchard. Can I tell you something? I don't have a sister. You never guessed it was me you were talking to every day, did you? I knew I could get away with it. No one here ever really knew me. No one except David. And yet you tried to send David to prison for life for a murder he didn't commit. Well, he shouldn't have refused to marry me after he got me pregnant. And he never should have married Ivy. You've had this plan in the works for a long time, haven't you? Since the day Ivy lost her last baby. And they brought me the tissue sample to analyze at the lab. Of course. The knife with the fetal tissue. Mm -hmm. The DNA test would show that David was the father. And in case you decided to test the maternal DNA, I stole Ivy's toothbrush, put it in my apartment for you to find. So you'd think that it was my baby. It almost worked. You had me fooled. Fooled everyone. Everyone except my mother. She found out I was faking being pregnant. She said she was going to have me committed. Do you think my baby's been born yet? God, I can't wait to hold her.
You must be so angry with me that I thought you were guilty. It about killed me. But I lied to you about Melinda that day in the attic. Seemed like a harmless lie at the time, but uh, it opened up a pretty big crack between us. I don't want to let Melinda leave anything else behind and let it get between us. Not guilt and not regret. I'm free. You're alive and David Jr. is safe. We're lucky. Yeah. 